Singapore is in the midst of a property boom. You can easily get a feel of it when you visit the crowded show flats of a newly launched property. Another way to tell is when you see property agents driving expensive cars. But to be a successful property agent, it takes hard work and perseverance. Something that's often unseen behind the glamorous image of an agent driving a big car. In our A Day in the Life series, Money Minds' Ellen Lokajaya trails ERA Group Division Director Kevin Lim to find out what a day in his life is really like. He starts the day flipping through the papers and looking at the property advertisements in the classified ads section. For Kevin Lim, it's become his habit for the past 10 years since entering the real estate industry. Looking through the papers not only updates him on the latest property offerings around Singapore, it also lets him see what his competitors are offering as well. Besides this, Kevin also checks his emails and the messages on his website. Then it's off to work. Kevin started his career when he was just 22 years old and through sheer determination and hard work, he rose to become one of ERA's brightest stars. At 27, Kevin earned his first million. Now at 32, he's Senior Group Division Director and leads one of the biggest teams of agents under ERA. The group he co-founded in 2006 has grown from 20 to 550 agents and is one of the company's top earners. And on this Monday, I joined him at his weekly Monday Sharing Networking or MSN, where his team of agents meet to discuss the weekend's sales and to share ideas and experiences. Most property agents will be working very hard on the weekends and Monday will just be an off day. So we instill a culture on my, on my, on my guys that every Monday 10 a.m. Uh, rain or shine, they will come back uh, to the office to have a networking session. And uh, it's a session for them to know each other better because this is a people business. So um, relationship is very important, uh, not just with the customer but um, within the team so that uh, there can be more sharing, there can be more uh, bonding. So this session helps a lot on the bonding and the sharing session. So what inspired you um, to go into this line? Well, um, I think when I was, I was young, um, probably primary five, my mom sold uh, away our three-room flat. Yep, um, back, back then, then she used a, a property agent. Uh, I still remember his name is uh, Alan. Then uh, he drove a very nice Rover convertible to our house for viewing. Then I will always, me and my brother will always uh, peep at him at the window when he, he leave after the viewing. Then I was like, hey, this guy, you know, it's very uh, ins inspirational. So, you know, maybe um, when I grow up, this is what I'm going to do. Kevin sold his first property, a Tuapayo HDB flat, to a couple for 170,000 Singapore dollars. But at 22, he had to overcome the negative impression of being too young in the industry. You are 22 years old and you're going to speak to sellers who are your seniors or even investors that have uh, invested in many, many properties and, and who are you, a young uh, guy coming to teach me what is good to invest and what is not good to invest. So that is the kind of uh, uh, problem that I usually face in the beginning when people are more sceptical about what you say, uh, not by what you say but by your appearance. <laughs> After MSN, the group heads off for lunch together and then he's off to the next meeting. Since his role has changed from sales agent to manager, his day-to-day -day work life has changed as well. Well, well of course, when I initially started, um, nothing but sales. Uh, morning to night, if I can don't sleep, I don't sleep. If I can don't eat, I don't eat. Every day is just packed with appointments. I just couldn't get enough of it, you know. just pack one after another, meeting people, always on the phone, always talking to people, always meeting people, always having viewings, Monday to Sunday. So now that um, I've stepped to a management role, um, now um, I think it's a totally different kind of um, ball game. Uh, the kind of satisfaction is the same because um, seeing that my agents win, seeing that they do make good money and they win um, awards every year, it makes me feel very proud, like a proud father. 
And so can you tell me a bit of some of the um, tricks of the trade that you learned while you were working as a real estate agent? How has that helped um, transition into a management position now? Most people think that uh, being a property agent, you have to be very good at talking. They always say, oh, I'm not good at talking. I think I cannot be a good property agent. But I think uh, this can be, be a misconception. Um, well, if you can talk, that's, that's considered a bonus. But there is people who don't like you to talk too much. So you need to know what kind of selling the um, customer wants, what kind of uh, presentation they want to be presented with. Kevin spends most of his day in meetings with his agents. His role in management means he provides consultancy services to his agents. This includes pouring through sales strategies and looking at minute details like the way advertising pamphlets are designed. He also meets up with his core team to talk about marketing strategies for new launches and discussing new upcoming developments. After the meetings, he takes time to go through some of his own administrative work and prepares for his training session later in the evening. At around 4pm, he calls on his team and they all head to the nearest coffee shop for a quick break. Then he's back in the office and we head to the training session, where he spends an hour motivating his team of agents. And on this day, Kevin has the pleasant task of presenting certificates to his top performers for the month of January. And before he heads back to his office, I walk with him to ask him his views on which property segment is doing well. If you look at the statistics, um, the, the East Coast side, it's 1516, is uh, always at top of the district when it comes to comparison. But uh, HDB is always the, the, the brand and butter for us Singaporeans, so the transactions uh, will always be about there. Um, the COV now, I think, is uh, still quite stable. But the only market that I see is moving, uh, especially, is the executive condominium, like a Twin Waterfall by uh, Fraser Centre Point. Um, it's about 728 units. Um, on day one of balloting, we, we have almost close to 1,000 uh, applicants. And on the, the first four hours of the balloting, I think we, we sold more than 200 units in a go. Do you think you've been successful as an agent? Successful means a different way, but uh, I think uh, so far I've done pretty well. I'm, I'm quite happy with uh, my, my result, um, the promise that I gave to myself when I first stepped foot into real estate back then. But Kevin's day is far from done. Join us next week for part two of A Day in the Life of a Real Estate Agent, where Kevin goes into the field using his vast sales experience to help a rookie agent seal a deal. Well, that's our show for this week. If you have any questions or comments, you'll find us at channelnewsasia.com slash moneymind. You'll also find us on Facebook. Well, thanks for watching and we'll see you next week. Last week in A Day in the Life of a Real Estate Agent, we introduced you to EIA's Senior Group Division Director, Kevin Lim. This week, the action picks up and Kevin heads out into the field to help a rookie agent sell a $6 million apartment at Sentosa Cove. And Money Minds' Ellen Lokajaya was right there with him. By late afternoon, Kevin Lim's day is still far from over. After a day in the office, he's headed to an apartment viewing, and I'm right there along with him. Today, Kevin is observing rookie agent Benjamin Tan as he shows this $6 million apartment to a potential client. And at the end of the showing, Kevin points out some of the different approaches he would have made in selling the apartment to the client. So when you know the architect, you can relate. So when you come there, you sell the dream to the architect, then it comes from inside. Then the client can feel. So he will be very serious with you. How is the architecture? What is the, the dream? Because when here, don't sell logic. When uh, you are doing the master room, it's good because you keep the door closed. So when you open, it's like wow, in, in this way. You don't even need to open up and like, you know, you come in, everything you can see. So you open up the bedroom, you go inside, wow. So that's nothing really good. 
After his discussion, we walked to the balcony to talk about how Benjamin might have done better. I think uh, basically over, um, he did a good job. But the things that I feel that uh, he should spend more time uh, talking to the client about uh, the lifestyle. Like maybe on here that the uh, birth cell is not really filled up. So he could maybe sell the idea that just imagine all the yacht fill up the place. Then uh, it will be a different lifestyle when all the lights comes up and at night when all the lightings comes up. So it's important to bring out the lifestyle. And secondly, I think that um, he should read up more on the architect background. So when, let's say the architects, uh, when building this condominium, uh, what is the story, what is the kind of logic and um, dream that they want to sell, that they build this space on. So by using a third party's opinion, especially from an uh, architect, a real architect that's representing this uh, condominium, it will add a lot of more uh, power to the sale. So is it the same tactic when you try to sell like landed properties or other apartments in the city or other parts of Singapore? Well, let's say for Orchard Road versus Real Valley, the view are uh, more or less is about the same. Of course, you, you see different things, but it's about the same. But over here, this is like a limited collection, a limited edition. Um, you don't get to see a, a, a yacht park outside your house most of the time in, in Ireland. So I think that's the difference. That's why I should feel that they should spend more time out on the balcony selling uh, what they can do with the balcony, uh, what they can do outside with all this uh, view and facilities. Then slowly, uh, until the clients are really more comfortable, then bring them back into the house and show them the functionality. I think um, dream and all that should come before the functionality. So is it the same for like um, selling show flats? Because show flats, at least uh, most of them are not developed, so we only see kind of a small preview of what's going to uh, be like. So is it different as well? Well, definitely, there is a totally different two, two different things. Um, when you sell a show flat, you can only sell based on models which are so small. And then uh, it takes a lot of imagination for the buyer to imagine what you're trying to tell me. Because you have your own uh, point of view. You're trying to explain something across to the buyer who has uh, maybe on a different frequency. So how to align the frequency back to yours? So by using uh, lots of videos, lots of uh, uh, pictures, you know, that can paint them the idea. Can you share with us some of your experience with dealing, I guess, with dif difficult clients or demanding clients? Well, um, I think if you want to be in a service line like us, uh, selling real estate, um, you should believe that there is uh, never a demanding uh, Thai client. Uh, they just have different expectations. Some of them have better, higher expectations. So you just have to deliver that part to them. Um, for example, they might find that the, the agents are uh, inadequate. They are not so uh, up to giving them knowledge about the developer, the architect, uh, uh, even on voting. You know, but this is an expectation which you can't say that uh, the clients are, are asking for too much. End of the day, they are paying six million to eight, ten million dollars. They will expect a good answer from a, a, a agent. So I think the agent have to have enough homework done. So what advice would you give to someone who is looking to become a real estate agent? Basically, I would say look for me. Uh, but to be serious, I think uh, they should speak to the people, speak to different company, uh, find out whether the culture the company's uh, profile, the, the way, the direction that the company is geared towards is um, suitable for themselves. Yeah, but uh, end of the day, I feel that uh, being a real estate agent, uh, most big part of it is actually how is your attitude and uh, what is your purpose coming to this new trade. Yeah, but I think you should speak to more people, um, listen to what they have to say, and you just have to make a decision. And after a long day at work, Kevin heads home. Peppa. Where he's welcomed by his two dogs, Peppa and Brownie, and his fiance. After a quick change of clothes, Kevin spends some quality time with his fiance. And he also takes some time to play with his two dogs. Before I left for the day, I sat down with him to chat about how he manages his work and life. So how important is work-life balance in your line of work? Well, I guess uh, work-life balance is important for most people. Um, our, our work are pretty high, high stress level, especially when I'm like running a team of 500 agents. So um, just imagine uh, one year that's like 365 days, like one day you talk to one agent, it's like one year, I don't think it's enough. So it's pretty stressed sometimes, but uh, it's a passion. I enjoy doing it, actually. So for me, during my off times, I, I do a lot of sports. 
um, especially those that are quite extreme, to, to, to let loose attention. Uh, weekends when I'm free, I actually go to Malaysia to do my dirt bike riding with some of my close friends and all that. And maybe um, during the weekends, I can just go across the house just to do my cable ski. Those are the things. And even on uh, weekends, I go um, riding mountain bike with my, um, my fellow directors and all that. While the day has ended for me, for Kevin, it's back to work. He parks himself in front of his computer and works late into the night.